eternal rock of ages, we bless and worship you. Father, we glorify your name because your name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. We thank you, Lord, because we depend absolutely on you. We thank you, Lord, because you know that you are the rock of ages upon which I stand. Father, we thank you, Lord, because we know that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We thank you, Lord, because your word is powerful. Your word is mighty. Your word breaks asunder all the fiery darts of the enemy, Lord. So, Lord, we just glorify you. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you have made in which we can rejoice. We can just cast our anxieties, cast our burdens onto you because you care so much about us. You have instructed us to say, cast all your cares and anxieties upon me, for I care much about you. We thank you, Lord, because you are the lily of the valley. You are the rock of ages upon which we stand. Father, we thank you for waking us up safely this morning, because only the living will worship you. We have no power of our own. Our, we surrender it all unto you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the adoration. We thank you, Lord, because your word is powerful. Your word breaks asunder all the fiery dust of the enemy, Lord, in our lives. We thank you, Lord, because when we abide in your presence, Lord, there is joy, there is peace. Lord, we thank you because we know that you have a plan and purpose for us. Your word says in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, that the thoughts I have for you, they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you an expected end. We thank you, Lord, for our thoughts at times, Lord, they are just contrary to your thoughts. Our thoughts are not consonant with you, Lord, but still because you are a merciful God. You have mercy upon whom you have mercy. Father, we thank you, Lord, because of your precious blood that was shed on Calvary. Your word says, without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. We thank you, Lord, because of your precious blood that was shed. We thank you, Lord, because in you we live, in you we abide. In you we breathe, in you we live every moment of our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you know that there is no other name given unto man whereby we can be saved except the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. So, Father, we just invoke your presence, Lord, in a meeting this morning, in a podcast this morning, that your word, Lord, will minister grace unto us, Lord. We will remember those of us, Lord, who are struggling, who are in need just as you provide for the people of old. Lord, provide. Lord, provide. Let your mercy be the provision. Because the psalmist says, one time I was young, now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his children beg for bread, Lord. Father, we just pray, Lord, that your abundance, Lord, will be a portion in Jesus' name. Your word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, all other things shall be added unto us, Lord. God of Elijah, God that provided from above. Lord, provide for us, Lord, so that your name will be exalted. There is so much confusion. There is so much panic. There is so much hopelessness in this current age in which we are for the almost two years now. Father, we just pray, Lord, that your healing power, you will heal our land. Father, we just pray because of the prayer of the anointed because of the prayer of people whom you have appointed to serve you, Lord. Father, that you bring this pandemic coronavirus to an end in Jesus' name. Everlasting Father, we remember those who have lost family members, Lord, those who have lost relatives, those who have lost acquaintances, those who have lost people, Lord, all over the world. Father, just minister to them. Father, encourage them, Lord. Father, those of us who are left behind, let us remember that it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death the judgment, so that our eyes are not focused on things we can see, but on things that are eternal, so that, Lord, we will wake up in the morning, we'll be in the washroom, we'll be worshiping God, we'll be driving on the road, we'll be singing hallelujah unto him, we'll be thinking of a new Jerusalem, the new heaven, Lord, that you have made for your elect. Your word says that you will come as a thief in the night, Lord, help us to see that your word is being fulfilled because so many people, so many people, millions of people have died worldwide, Lord. And those, so, some are not prepared, some are prepared to meet their Savior, but those who are not prepared, Lord, 
Father, we just say for the sake of the elect, Lord, that you will have mercy upon those of us who are left behind. Because your word says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death the judgment. Lord, the judgment of God, let it prevail in every situation that pertains to us. In this current age in which we are, Lord, there is no more truth. There is no more truth. There is no more truth. People can collude, people can lie, people can do anything, Lord, just to suit their purpose. Lord, because of your healing virtue, Lord, minister to us, Lord. Father, forgive us, because your word says all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Father, there is none of us who is worthy to stand before you. Lord, our righteousness we know is like filthy rags in your presence. Lord, we are scared about this every time we read about this, Lord. But because of the your precious blood, Lord, forgive. Lord, pardon. Lord, forgive. Lord, pardon. Lord, forgive. Lord, pardon. Father, we just commit those who are in agony now into your care, Lord. Yes, you wake up this morning, you are listening to me. You say, how am I going to find my breakfast? How am I going to have food for the table, Lord? Father, we just pray, Lord, that in your infinite mercy, Lord, that you will provide. Just as you provided for Elijah, Lord, provide for that man, for that woman, Lord, that is just sitting, that is just listening to your word. Provide for that, for those adults, Lord, that they are looking for, how am I going to make it in life? Everything seems so bad. Father, we just pray, Lord, because of your grace, Lord, that you open heaven, Lord. Because your anointing breaks all the yokes of the enemy, Lord. You are listening to me, yes, you have you know your heart is condemning you but god is not condemning you your past is what has brought you into this day you know it yourself but we serve a god that forgets forgives our past lord father because of your cleansing power cleanse cleanse our heart lord cleanse the heart of this individual that is listening to me lord that lord his heart lord will be embold emboldened by your word that we know that you are the one that can forgive you are the one that can pardon Lord, bring all, bring all the things of the past that the enemy has been haunting them, bring them to subjection of the power of the living world. Everlasting Father, we commit the week ahead unto your care. We do not know what it holds, but we can face tomorrow because we know you live. So Lord, give us the grace. Lord, give us that hope, Lord, because your word says in the book of Hebrews 11 that face the substance of things for who for the evidence of things not seen. Lord, let your, the hope in your word give us that peace and joy. Father, we just bless you for this moment. We thank you, Lord, for every moment of prayer, Lord, that brings us closer to you, because without calling upon you, we, we are hopeless. Whether without calling upon you, we will be depressed all day. We realize there are so many people, Lord, that are killing themselves, taking their lives because of depression, because of what is going on. Many people are seeing psychiatrists, they are seeing all kinds of healthcare professionals, Lord, Father, but we know that you are the healer. You are the healer of our souls. You are the healer of our mind, Lord. No antidepressant will take away depression completely, but you are the only one that can heal. You are the only one that can deliver. I just pray for such individuals, Lord, that you will heal their mind. You will heal everything pertaining to them, Lord. You will heal their pockets. You will heal their mind. You will heal their brain, Lord, that they will be able to say yes of a truth. You are a living God. Father, we just bless you for this day. We glorify your holy name. We thank you, Lord, because you are deliverer. We thank you, Lord, because you are the only one we can call upon. We give you the glory. We give you the adoration. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. We, Our time is uh, fast spent, but every time that we spend with the Lord is a wonderful time. I woke up this morning and as I was in the washroom, I was saying, Lord, what do you want us to meditate upon? You see, we meditate upon the word of God together because I am of imperfect lead. Because I am of imperfect lead. Because I cannot do it alone. It's only the grace of God that can sustain me. It's only because of the power that is in the blood of the Lamb. It is not by my power, it is by the grace of God. That is why we need to live our lives in total surrender to the Almighty. 
in total surrender. When you say, I cannot do it alone, God comes to your rescue. But when you feel arrogant, you think you are all in all, the Lord says your righteousness is like filthy rags in God's presence. The topic God wants us to look at is, this morning, God doesn't fit into our box. God doesn't fit into our box. There are so many times in our lives we say, well, I know how God works. I know how God operates. Yes, you might have had some experience. I'm not dis disputing this, that you've had some experience in the Lord because something has happened in the past or that kind of thing. But I want you to know that you cannot put God in a box. And we are going to look at it from the scriptures, from the word of God this morning. Because the word of God is powerful. The word of God is mighty. I woke up this morning. Lord, the Lord was telling me, telling me about the story of Naaman. Naaman. Those of us who are Bible scholars. Those of you who are Bible students. I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm just an ordinary physician. Because I experience the grace of God in my life, because I experience it on a daily basis, that is the confidence that I have to come into you, to your house, to your heart this morning. Because when we look at the word of God, the word of God is living. God doesn't fit into our box. There are some that they say, well, I want to do the work of God, I go into the seminary. They go into the seminary, all the people that they meet there, just like seminary is just an ordinary place, just like, a, just like a house or somewhere or an institution, their minds are polluted. Their faith is corrupted. They cannot really call upon God. They cannot, their faith, I know of so many friends who said since they went into seminary, things have changed. But I'm telling you that I've not gone to any seminary, but I'm telling you that I know the power of the living God. God has has appeared to me many times in vision, in dreams, in so many things that I know him, that he lived. And that is the confidence that I have every time when you listen to the word. It's not because of my own righteousness, but it's because of his goodness. Because I have no righteousness of my own. Because the Bible says all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that is the problem with some of us. We look at our ministers, we look at our geos, I cannot emphasize this more than anything. Please don't look at them. Don't look at them, for example. He says we should look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Not unto G.O., not unto the evangelist, not unto the pastor, not unto me, because I am not your example. The only example we have is Christ, because there is a name that has been given unto man. The name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. I want us to look at 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 to 27. We may not have time to look through the whole thing, but God has a message for us. God has a message for us. It's about Naaman. Naaman, as the Bible says, Naaman was infected with leprosy. In the ancient world, leprosy was a deadly disease because it was incurable. When we talk of certain diseases in medicine, we talk of curable and we talk of some that are incurable. So a lot of infectious diseases, they are curable. But infectious disease is COVID-19. Do we have a cure? The answer is no, we don't have any cure. When you look at what is happening worldwide, to over 95% of patients we are treating with for COVID-19, we are just giving supportive therapy. We give them oxygen. We give them steroids. If the blood pressure is low, we try and support the blood pressure. We don't have any particular cure. There are some experimental drugs that have been used for on some people, and they, they, the recovery rate is probably better, but they have not been approved or because they are expensive. And so when somebody has COVID-19, you can imagine unless there's divine intervention, when you are, have comorbid, comorbid problems, you are dead. So we talk of curable and incurable. So at this particular point in time in history, it was incurable. The many references in the Bible indicate that the disease was widespread because it's a disease that you get by contact. 
In today's sermon, we are going to consider an incident surrounding the miraculous healing of one of such leper that lived centuries ago. His name is Neymar. If you start from verse 1, the Bible says there, there was a commander of a great army, a very famous person, which means whether you are famous or not famous, you can be infected, you can be sick. We look at COVID-19, how many of our premiers, how many of our presidents, how many of top, top people that have been infected. And the problem is, once they are infected, what happens is that oh, everybody announces it. And that's why some people think it's only a disease of those who are rich and famous. It is not. When those who are not rich and famous are infected, nobody knows about them. Neymar refused to follow the prophet's instruction. You see, what happened was that when you lead, God has a way of doing things. But the problem with human beings is we have our own mind. We have our own mind. And God has given us a mind, no doubt, but we need to examine our mind in conjunction with the word of God. When we look at 2 Kings, it says, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and in high favor because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. I don't need a bolt in your life. I have a bolt in my life. The bolt I have in my life is I know that I'm not perfect. I know I'm depending upon him on a daily basis. There are some of us who think we know everything. I want you to know that you don't. Because when you look at what happened to Naaman in this particular story, you will, you will pity him. You will realize that you cannot just fit God into a box. The Bible says the Syrians on one hand one of the raids had carried off a little girl from the land of Israel, and she worked in the service of Naaman's wife. You see, this little maid was just a slave. The, Naaman will see him, the commander. And you know, if you have been with police officers, military people, they are a proud set of people. If you've been with some eminent, some doctors, they are proud. They think money is everything in life. Some of them, they don't even give them to anything about the word of God. So, this is the situation. What happens is that the Syrians, they were raided. Verse 3. She said to her mistress, Would that my Lord, while the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So, Naaman went in and told his Lord, Thus and so spoke the girl from the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. When you look at Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, the Bible says he was a great man with his master and in high favor. Because by him the Lord had given victory to Israel. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. When you look at leprosy, leprosy in those days was incurable. So, I know that you are listening to me, you have an issue in your life. You say, is this ever going to go away? The Lord is telling me that, yes, the Lord is going to answer you. He does things at his appointed time. So, Lord, I just commit that individual, listen to me. You know his or her problem, Lord. Everlasting Father, King of Kings, Lord, provide solution. Lord, deliver this individual from that situation that we know that you are God. And what happened was that Naaman went in and told his Lord. So what happened as we read further? And verse 6, he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you Naaman my servant, that you may cure him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive? that this man sends war to me to cure a man of his leprosy. Only consider and see how he is seeking a quarrel with me. But when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? You see, what happened with men of God, as I read in the scriptures, 
kings and rulers come to them. When you have some of men and women of God, what are they do doing? They are looking for favor from kings and rulers because their eyes are not focused on heaven. When you look at Nigeria, when you look at many other developing countries, because of poverty, what happens is that people, they are going to X, they are going to Y, and when they are going to X or Y, they think that that's where the answer lies. The kings and rulers should come unto them, but many of them, instead of spending time in the presence of the king of kings, going onto the mountains to go and w w read the Bible, to seek the face of the Lord, they are busy parading themselves around the corridor of power. And what are they doing? Just to seek favor. And what they seek favor, everything is money. But see what the man of God said. But when Elisha, the man of God, how that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come now to me, that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. I can tell you, my listener, this morning, if you do not know the power of God, if you do not know that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, I want to admonish you, I want to encourage you, because one time I was in darkness, one time I didn't know him, one time I was thinking that I didn't want to have anything to do with these religious fanatics, and I thought I was doing the right thing, but when Jesus came into my life in September of 1973, I can tell you that I'm no more the same. Because the woman with the issue of blood, the moment she tore the hem of God's garment, the Bible says for 12 years she was going from one physician to another. But the moment she tore the hem of God's garment, she was never the same. So what happened was that Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And you know the story of Elisha. Here was a man who would not just take for an ordinary portion. You see, I want to tell you the secret of getting things from God. The secret of getting things from God is humility. Elijah was humble before his master, Elijah. There are some of you who have one gift or two gifts. You are under a pastor or a minister. You do not allow your, the power of God to generate through you. You just think you want to have your own ministry. Behold, you jump out and you cannot do anything for the Lord. You are after money. I hear of so many pronouncements, so many, of me so many messages from so-called ministers even here in the Western world, but more in third world countries, in Nigeria, in Uganda, in South Africa, the way they have polluted the word of God in terms of their behavior. There are some that their immigration people are looking after, they are hiding in the washroom, they are hiding with con their concubines, with prostitutes. I want to encourage you, if you are listening to this message, do not follow any human being as your example. And if any of them is listening, I want you to know that God is able to set you free. God is able to deliver you. God is able to tame your sexual powers, your sexual towards the right source. Because some of them, they are married. Some of them, they have children. And look at the kind of legacy they are going to leave for their children. Because some of us think everything ends here. I want to tell you that the Bible says it is appointed unto man who wants to die after death, the judgment. The judgment of God is inevitable on you and I. I am not the one that is going to judge you because the Bible says judge not. Because I'm going to stand before him. Every little imagination, every little word, every hidden word that I say, God says I'm going to give account of it. And I pray that God will help me, Lord to be able to guide my lead, to guide my thoughts, to guide my mind. So what happened? Elisha sent a messenger to him, go and wash in the Jordan seven times. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, because there is power when you speak. There is power in the word of God. There is power when your prophets who are anointed by you speak. And it says, go and wash in the Jordan river seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean when i touch that m of his garment when i touch that m of his garment when i touch that m of his garment jesus made me whole you see when the word of god comes out from prophets of god 
the word of God is fulfilled. Because there is so much pollution nowadays, people don't respect words that come from ministers, that come from word of God. People that, because you realize that when they call prayer meeting, who do you find there? Women. Because women know how to express their heart unto the Lord. Men, they are, we think we are strong. Probably is the testosterone in us that doesn't even allow us to listen to the word of God. So what happens here? Naaman was angry. Did you see that? Me. Pride of this world will make you angry. Your position in life can make you angry when God is speaking. Your wealth in life can make you angry when God is speaking. What you think, your achievement in life can make you angry. Your authority, your power can make you angry. Neymar was angry and went away, saying, some of you, you have gone away from the Lord. The Lord has been speaking to you. The Lord has been directing you. The Lord has been saying, don't do this, don't do that. But what happened? Neymar was angry and went away. Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God. That is where the topic is coming from this morning. God doesn't fit into our box. You see, because Naaman already had in mind how he thought God would act. Some of us, we think we know how God is going to act. Oh, I went to him for prayer. What did he do? He, did, he just prayed for 30 seconds. I'm telling you, when God speaks his word, when Lazarus was dead for four days, the only thing that the Lord said is, Lazarus, rise up. Lazarus, rise up. Only those three words. And when you look at some of us, we think we know how God acts. I don't. You may. Some of us, we think that we are, we are so close to God that whatever happens, oh, this is just it. I'll tell you about a story of a woman of God that we know so much, so well, being used mightily by God. When God is using you mightily, don't allow that to go over above your head to think that you are God. She phoned us about an incident. And the first statement that came from her is that you kids, myself and my wife, of course we are kids to her because she's older than us, she's old enough to be a parent. She said, apart from the Holy Spirit that directs you, do you have anybody that you fear? I want you to know, my listener this morning, do not fear man. That's what the Bible says. Fear God. Fear God. We depend upon him, depend absolutely upon him. So when she said that, we say, hey, well, Mama, thank you. The only person we fear is God. The only person that I fear is God because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you fear God, even when you are lonely, when you are alone, when your wife is not there, you are not going to be dishonest. When your husband is not there, you are not going to say something that is nasty because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God will give you the wisdom. He says, what did he say? Are not Abana and Papha, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Because Naaman thought that he could fit God into a box. God doesn't fit into a box. God doesn't fit into our box. But his servants came near and said to him, My master, it is a great word the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? You can see the servants. They could see the word of God. Many a time, some of us think we are so spiritual. Who are you to talk to me like that? I hear some of these ministers, especially in third world countries. I hear many of them in Nigeria through their sermon. They are boasting. One is boasting. Who are you? You are dealing with me like that. I'm going to show you. Let me tell you. From dust we come, unto dust you are going to return. You are just an ordinary person. When you are just an ordinary person, why not allow the humility, the word of God to be revealed? Oh, look at the way he talked to me. You think I'm this. You think I'm that. You think I'm one of you. You think I'm this. No, you are nothing. You are nothing before him. You are nothing because if you think too highly of yourself, then you find yourself in the lowest air. Because the Bible says, he that exalted himself shall be humbled. But he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. I see so many of us, so many that proclaim the power of God. When you are announcing crusade, you think you are the one that is going to perform miracle. No. 
Jesus Christ is the miracle worker. We serve a miracle working God. It's not you. You think that once they come to your own church or to your own denomination, that is where their salvation No, There is a name given unto man whereby we can be saved. That is the name of Jesus. It's not the name of a bishop. It's not the name of a Jew. It's not the name of anybody. It's not the name of any denomination. No denomination we say. Because we are all human beings. Because when we look at what happens in one denomination or another, it at times is not different from one another. But what happens? His servants came near and said to him, You see, what did they say? My father, it is a great word. The prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? And I will tell you a testimony of my own life. Because those of you who listen to me, you see that most of what I tell you is the testimony of what happened to myself and my wife and our children. I remember what happened when my wife was pregnant with her third baby. That was in Nigeria in 1983. She delivered in 1984 July. So what happened was that we were warned not to have the baby in the hospital but to come and have it in a prayer house but look at me i was a registrar in obstetrics and gynecology in the teaching hospital how do you want to rationalize that i'm going to prayer house prayer house to have my own baby i look at all the possible complications what of if she start bleeding apart from bleeding what of if she ruptured her uterus or what of there is fetal distress? There is no vacuum. There is no forces to deliver the baby. I look at every intricacy. I say, no. I told this woman of faith. I said, we are not going to do that. So, but she said, you need to pray. But there is a problem ahead. I said, mama, please pray for that problem in that hospital to go away. So just to cut it short, what then happened was that my wife then delivered fast furious delivery she must have abrupted i was sitting standing with her the baby came out at the placenta at the university college hospital in Ibadan, and i screamed to the to call the nurses because none of them was around and i said she's delivering and they came behold the baby and the placenta and everything was in my hand that was my daughter and no perineal laceration nothing we went home the following day we were, we were supposed to go home the following day. So what happened was that they had to check the temperature and everything. The temperature was high, around 38.5. They say, oh, maybe it's just because of the labor and everything. So they check it again. The whole the temperature went to 40.5 degrees Celsius. They won't discharge us home with this. And they had to do all the blood culture, viral culture. Those are the days when University College Hospital in Ibadan was great. And I was a registrar in the unit. So all the professors came and they were checking my wife. And we gave her antibiotics. Despite the fact there was no culture, we did everything. She continued to spike the temperature. Okay. So six day, we needed to go home for naming ceremony as it's our culture. And uh, I had to go back to this woman of faith. I said, Mama, my wife has delivered six days ago. Her temperature is still up. What do I do? You know what this woman said? She said, I should just go and bring a plastic container. And as I was about to go, she said, wait, they have one here. She told them to go and fetch some water from the well. They have a well in that church compound. They pray 24 hours a day. There is a prayer chain. And the woman said, as soon as she drinks this water, the temperature will go down. Let me tell you, I did not believe her. So this is why I'm telling you, don't look at anybody as your example. Look unto Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But because of the word of God that I have in my heart, I say, if this woman says this, Lord, I'm going to do it. But at the same time, I look at the water from the well. This is not distilled water. This is not water that has been boiled. Should I go and boil it eh, and sterilize it before I give it to my wife? How do you imagine giving a water from a well, contaminated well? I don't know the contents of the well. 
to somebody who has fever. It doesn't just make sense. And I'm telling you this morning, you are listening to me. God has told you to do certain things in your life and it doesn't make sense. Do it. You and it's that woman, you are listening to me. God has told you, do this, but because it doesn't just make sense, you don't want to do it. God is talking to you. The Lord is talking to you. You are God is talking to you. Yes, you are living in that house, Lord, with that man. You know that you are not married. You know it's not the word of God. It's better to marry than to burn. The Lord is saying, pack out. You are having immoral sexual intercourse, and you know you are a child of God. You know you should not be doing this. Fornication. So, Lord, I just pray that, that this individual listen to me, Lord, that you create in such a clean heart. Yes, you are stealing money from somewhere. I don't know where you are stealing that money from. The Lord is saying that return that money and confess so that you will be cleansed. Because there is cleansing power when we go to the Lord in prayer. So what happened was that I took the water home. I took the water to the hospital because my wife was sitting in the hospital. And as soon as I arrived, the nurses were saying, Oh, Dr. Akimi, the prayer warrior. They didn't know my heart was troubled. They didn't know that they, they thought I was so strong. Some people look at you, they say, Oh, you are such a prayer warrior. I pray, no doubt, but my heart was troubled. Because for six days, normal delivery, my wife was still in the hospital. And I told the nurses to check the temperature. As soon as they checked the temperature, it was 40.5. Okay. So I pulled the curtain. It was on Southwest 4. I remember up to today. And I gave my wallet water to drink. As she drank it, immediately she was saying, listen, the temperature is going down. I said, what is going down? You are kidding. Then what did I do? I told the nurses to come and check the temperature. Behold, the temperature went down to 35.8. My wife was having goose flesh. My wife said, what? Nobody could believe that. And what happened? The consultants came the following day. We were discharged home. You see, certain things, when God says you should do it, it doesn't make sense. God doesn't fit into our box all the time. So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. And his flesh was restored, like the flesh of a little child. And it was clean. Whatsoever is polluting your body, whatsoever is that disease, whatsoever, whether disease of mind, disease of body, I declare healing. That the healing power of God will set the hearers of this world <clears throat> free. Because there is cleansing power, there is anointing power when we listen to the word of God. This is where we are going to stop this morning. God doesn't fit into your box. The Lord is telling you to do certain things. God has told me to do certain things that I rationalize, but when I follow through, then there is joy, there is peace. I had a dream in October of 1992 for three consecutive days that I was coming to Saskatchewan. I didn't know where Saskatchewan was, and my wife, a few months after, and with the children, we said, Lord, this is where you wanted us to go. I resigned my job. I was in the Middle East for about 10 months there. I had a dream in a desert in the Middle East. It's a beautiful country, Saudi Arabia. And what happened? I obeyed. God can speak in a desert. God can speak in the most difficult situation of your life. I did not get the dream. The dream didn't come to me when I was in England. My family was in England. The dream didn't come to me when I was on the mountain. God doesn't fit into our box. And I listened. And I told my wife when they came to me in December that God wants us to go to Saskatchewan. My son said, where is Saskatchewan? I said, I don't know. We went to buy a map and we looked at it. And when they came for the holiday, as soon as they were going back, we packed our luggage and everything. And we went back to England. Two weeks after I arrived in England, I got a job. And this is where I am. I first got the job in Lloyd Minister. 
Uh, I got the job first in Newfoundland, then in Lord Minister. But I already told them yes in Newfoundland. I didn't want to disappoint them. Then I went there, I spent a year. Then the year after, I applied for residency training in Saskatoon. I got in there and I have a job since I have been in Canada. I want to tell you this. God doesn't fit into your box. I know you have your own mind. I know your mind is fixed on certain things. But what God is telling me this morning is that think of those things that look impossible. And God of Abraham, God of Isaac, we meet you in your area of need. Father, we just bless you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for your word is powerful. Your word breaks asunder all the fairly dance of the enemy. Lord, in any areas of our lives where we have not been obedient to you, Lord, Father, we just pray to give us the spirit of obedience, Lord, because we know that you have great plan, great purpose for us. Father, you know our headache. You know our issues. You know our problems. The enemies of our souls, Lord, the way the same way came, may they return the same way. Grant unto us victory. Grant unto us the power to stand, the power to be obedient to you and to your guidance. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.